Jesus Christ is the only way. God bless you, ma'am. You just look the other way? When I, when I, okay, God bless you. Jesus Christ still loves you. You see the dirty faces that I'm getting? Jesus Christ still loves them. Satan, the enemy, that's working against you. Even if you don't believe in God, he's still working against you. Satan don't care if you believe in him or not. In fact, the greatest trick that Satan ever pulled is the fact that he never existed. Won't be so quick to deny God, but say, yeah, there is a devil. choice to accept him. You see, the word translated understood, it also means overcome. But either way, if the darkness John referred to in the book of John, in the Bible, it was simply the absence of light. Also, we know it to be, then by its very presence, the light would have replaced it. Darkness is not an entity or force and can neither understand nor overcome. It always yields to light, returning only when light is withdrawn. Think about this, ladies and gentlemen. That light has come into the world. Hallelujah. Light has come into the world. But man, man rejected the light because his deeds were evil continually. If John was talking merely in terms of physical light and death, also some understand the passage the same would be true because by definition death is the absence of life. God bless you. So John had to be speaking in a spiritual sense. The light represents the Lord Jesus. The propagation of good. The darkness cannot overcome him. The prince 
loves you, if you feel like you have no love, I want you to say that God never forgotten about you. And he wants you to come to him. He loves you. You see, John chapter 1, verse 3 through 5 also contains the answer to another question. Did Satan create evil? Again, speaking of Jesus, John wrote, through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. Oh, you got one already. All right, God was. You see, Paul confirmed this in his letter to the Colossians. Hallelujah. Glory unto God. Thank you, Jesus. I serve God. Only God. I give service to Him. Service to Him. I serve the Lord my God. And to Him do I give service. I come to shun evil. I come to share the love of God for you to repent. God bless you, ma'am. Jesus is the way. You see, Jesus is the image of the invisible God. Hallelujah. That's right. Amen. God bless you. I love the people in this area already. They're receiving the word. I gotta mark this place down as a good place. Jesus is the image of the invisible God. The firstborn over all creation. By him all things were made. Things in heaven and on earth. Satan wants you to think that you came from a monkey dog. <laughs> this earth is like what, 60 billion years old? This is what we are taught in school. Why? Why are we taught lies in school? Why are we taught lies in school? Why are we taught lies in the world? Why are they lying to us? Why does the devil want to lie? Not only because he's the father of lies, but because he does not want you to know the truth. Hallelujah. He, was not, he does not want you to know the truth. He does not want you to know who God is, what His Word says, because He knows once you get a taste of it, once you understand it, you're going to know the way. You're going to turn away from fornication. Hallelujah. You're going to turn away from adultery. You're going to turn away from lying. You're going to want to serve God. That's exactly what God wants. He wants you to turn away from sin. He wants you to serve Him. He wants you to have life, because only by Him can you have life. Hallelujah. Jesus is the way. He is the way today. I ask the people in this area to choose Jesus Christ and have Him in your life. Have you considered Christ today? Have you considered Him today? Choose life. Choose Him. Hallelujah. Glory unto God. <clears throat> Visible and invisible. For the thorns, our powers, our rulers, our, our, our authorities, all things were created by him and for him. Colossians chapter 1 verse 15 through 16. Come on. Jesus loves you. You have a choice, ladies and gentlemen, to accept him. It's the best thing. Thank you, sir. Christ died for us. You see, if you read the two passages, if you read the Word of God, then you have to conclude that Satan, who is himself a created being, did not create evil. Oh, did he just say that? Oh, man. <laughs> so where did it come from? It's a question that we have to ask ourselves. So where did the evil come from then? Well, Ezekiel 
in Isaiah have the answer. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, take up a lampet. A layman concerning the king of Tyre. And say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. You are the model of purification. Full of wisdom and, and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of, of God. Every precious stone adored you. Ruby, topaz, emerald, jasper. And all these other stones, the Bible says. Your sittings and mountings were made on gold on the day that you were created. They were prepared. Ezekiel chapter 28, 11 through 13. Come on. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a street ministry. I'm only focused on telling you the truth. My name is Lucas Bassarelli. I'm here to tell you the truth. I'm here to give you the word of God. I'm here to warn the people. God bless you, man. I'm here to warn the people that judgment is coming. And God wants you to have life. He don't want you in judgment. Are you kidding me? God don't want you in judgment. If he did, he wouldn't have cared about you. You know, that's not what, you know what, 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 what stumbles me is the fact that people turn their back on the only way. God never turned his back on you. That way, the truth and the life is available, ready for you. God is, is, is waiting for you to turn to him. He loves you. He will bless you beyond measure. But you have to repent. You have to repent, ladies and gentlemen. We cannot, you know, we cannot turn to God and then continue to live a life in sin. No, it don't, it don't work like that. You see, through the first ten verses of the chapter of 28, Ezekiel had been speaking. The human ruler of Tyre, calling him the prince of Tyre, being in verse 11. The Lord had him look past the human figurehead of the power behind the stone. Satan, whom Ezekiel addressing as the king of Tyre. The same Satan that is making you believe that God is not real. That the man that's, that's over here standing in the corner is just talking for no reason. This is what, this is what he want people to believe. This is what he want people to think. Satan, the enemy, that's working against you. Even if you don't believe in God, he's still working against you. Satan don't care if you believe in him or not. In fact, the greatest trick that Satan ever pulled is... The fact that he never existed. Won't be so quick to deny God, but say, yeah, there is a devil. The problem here today is that we are a people who are walking around with our heads cut off. Believing anything that anyone says. We don't do research. We don't, we don't, we don't look things up. We don't, wait a minute, I gotta look this up. God tells us to research, to test the spirit, to see that it is of God. To make sure that the person that is claiming Christ is of Christ. God bless you, ma'am. Like a flyer? Okay. All right. Amen. Jesus is the way. You know, the truth remains is that Satan was created. Oh, yeah. He was created, ladies and gentlemen. He's a created being. He's real, and so are devils. So are unclean spirits roaming around, going back and forth on the earth. Because they don't want you knowing the truth. Keep you distracted. That's exactly what Satan wants. Distraction. For God wants life. He wants you to have life, ladies and gentlemen. He wants you to know Him today. Hallelujah. Glory unto God. He wants you to know Him today. Jesus is the way. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus Christ is the only way. God bless you, ma'am. You just looked the other way? When I, when I, okay, God bless you. Jesus Christ still loves you. You see the dirty faces that I'm getting? Jesus Christ still loves them. You know, confirming that John 
And Paul said, he was not created to be evil. In fact, was the model of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Ezekiel 28, 14. You were anointed as a guardian, cherub. For so I ordained you. You were on the holy mount of God. You walked among the fiery stones, the fiery stones. Should I say fiery, fiery, same thing. You see, Satan's original role was to head up the squadron of cherubim who guard the throne of God among men, those chosen for the palace guard also, were also considered to be the most loyal, highly skilled and trustworthy, the finest examples of the king's warriors. As the leader of such a group charged with protection and protecting the throne of God, Satan would have been among the most admired of all created beings. That's why when people come to me, they say, you know what? I think I saw the devil in my dream. I said, what did he look like? They said he had horns. I said, that's not the devil. We gotta know who our enemy is. Ladies and gentlemen, we can't be a stiff necked stupid people. We gotta know who your, you gotta know who your enemy is. You see, when the army, when the military goes out to battle, they know the enemy, they know what type of weapons he got. You see, Satan knows that you could have weapons too. God gives you spiritual weapons. God tells us to study his word. Show thyself a workmanship. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, my, 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 my waking up minds today, focus on Christ. Because what the devil wants is that he wants to make sure, he wants to make sure that you don't know how to use your weapon in a spiritual warfare. In the spiritual warfare, Christ wants us to know. God bless you, man. You were blameless in many in your ways from the day you were created to the wickedness was found in you. Through your widespread trade, you were filled with violence and you were you sinned. So I drove you in disgrace from the mouth of God. And I expelled you, O guardian cherubim, from the fiery stones. God bless you. Your heart became proud on account of your beauty and your and you corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor. This is what the Bible says. This speaks of the enemy. The enemy that is against me and you. Satan wants division. Satan wants Division, he wants the he wants people to be divided. He don't want you loving your neighbor. He somebody fall on the sidewalk, he wants you to keep walking. He don't want you to do anything but think about only yourself. And society that we are living, the society that we live in today is trying to make people focus all on themselves and nobody else. That's why they got their phones out. Where do you think we got this technology from? Who do you think is feeding people this? God says it's not important for all this other stuff. What's important is that you know Him and you obey the gospel and you live by Christ. You live for Christ in your life. I tell you today, ladies and gentlemen, that eternal life is more important than all these things that are in this world. Once you, once you understand the importance of what God is saying, then we understand what's happening. Hallelujah. Glory unto God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. See, like I said, Satan was not created to be evil. But like all of us, God bless you, sir. Like all of us, he had the potential of choosing evil. God bless you. Thank you. The devil chose evil. And like many of us today, we choose to do the things that we're doing. God says, His way is right. 
His way is life. God is telling you, you're choosing death. If you live in sin, you're choosing death. Hallelujah. Glory unto God. If you live a life that's outside of Christ, if you live a life that is against God and rebellion, you're choosing death. This is a choice that you and you alone are making. People are saying, and at the day of judgment, people are going to say, the devil made me do it. God says, I ain't going to want to hear it. This is, this is an opportunity right now for each and every one of you to consider Jesus in your life. I'm telling you today, I was a person that I thought that I can live a life without Christ. I said, I don't need no God. What? I don't need God. That's what I said to myself. God humbled me. God said, wait, you do need me. Watch this. I'm telling you today, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to come a time where you're going to need God. You're going to need Him in your life. Because we as a people, we can't live without Him. Yeah, we can feed ourselves and, and we can sit here and, and clothe ourselves and, and do all these wonderful things. Yeah, I'm going to pay my rent. I'm going to do all of this without God. And we provided all that for you. Matter of fact, who has your heart beating? You know, I asked someone, I said, I said to someone, I said, Someone, how did you get life? That person said, oh, I was born. That's just the that's just the common the common answer that I get is that someone was born. The people who deny God cannot they cannot give an answer of how life came about. God tells us in His Word in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. Period. God is the sustainer of all life. Yours too. But one thing we got to understand is that we can't come to God and continue to live a life in sin. We have to repent. And that's what's not being told in many churches today. People have gotten comfortable with the message. Gotten comfortable. They brought pills to the church and everything. Falling asleep. God bless you, sir. God don't want you getting comfortable in your flesh. He wants you to walk by His Spirit. Hallelujah. I'm, 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 I'm not making sense. Some, some, minds is French fries. They're not hearing me. God wants you to live unto Him. Hallelujah. Today could be your last day. What will you do? It's scary because you're not promised tomorrow. But you see, with Christ in your life, you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry, period, because eternal life is promised to you. The Spirit of God that comes inside of you and don't die. Your flesh will die, though. And many people are choosing to live a life according to the flesh. I'm telling you today, ladies and gentlemen, make the choice for yourself. True Jesus Day. Whom will you serve? Will you serve the iPhone? Will you serve... God bless you, man. Choose ye this day. God is giving us a choice today. Hallelujah. Are you free? You're free to choose who you ever please. God bless you. Again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not here to condemn anyone. I'm not here to practice religion. I'm not religious. I'm not religious at all. I'm just a watchman here to warn the people that judgment is coming, warning them that sin leads to death. Come out the flesh. Come out the flesh. Turn away from the flesh. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, watch it. That's flesh. Whoa, whoa. Flesh. They look at their skin and say, come out the flesh. I'm not supposed to come out my flesh. God is telling us today. The works of the flesh. The desires of the flesh. God is telling us to come out of those ways. You see, many people think of Satan being the most, the, the most 
evil looking thing? Whenever we talk about the devil, he's got to have horns. Here you go, sir. He's got to have horns and stuff. Stupid stuff. He could come as a marvelous piece of light. He wouldn't even know he's coming. But in God's word, we can see the fruits of the spirit of each person. When we follow Christ and know his word, have his word stirred up inside of us. Hallelujah. Take the words the most beautiful, wise, powerful of all God's created beings. And became very proud of these things. It was the pride that caused this downfall. The same downfall that some of us are, are experiencing today. Hallelujah. Pride that will bring you down to the ground. It was pride that caused his downfall. Pride that will cause your downfall. And when he was caught out of his pride, he would not let go. His pride would not let him submit. So he rebelled. Isaiah chapter 14 verse 13 to 14 tells us how he set out to rise himself above the angels once again, to sit enthroned in the place of God and to become like God. That's the thing today. Satan lying to people, telling them they can be like gods. You can be, you can be a god if you want. Mm, not possible. You want some mail? Yeah, I got some mail for you. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> I'm warning the people today. Get right. Get right today. Choose Christ. You say in your heart, you will ascend to heaven. The Bible says that Satan said that he will rise above the throne, above the stars of God. He will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly. On the utmost heights of the sacred mountain, he said, I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. He will make himself like the most high God. I'm, telling, I'm talking about your enemy, sir. My enemy. The ruler in the darkness. The principality that's even over this area. You see, in his pride, Satan demanded that glory do only to God be redirected to himself. Hallelujah, glory unto God. In doing so, he gave us the biblical definitions of good and evil. Everything that yields to God or glorifies him is good. And everything that rebels against God or glorifies someone or something which else is evil. Ladies and gentlemen, God is warning us. He's telling us today. God is telling us today. God is telling us today. To repent. Repent. And turn to Jesus. God himself appears to hold this view. Look at Isaiah chapter 42. Verse 8. The Bible says, I am the Lord. That is my name. God makes it very clear. The Word of God says, I will not give my glory to another or my praise to idols. Many people got idols. You got idols right in your pocket. The iPhone, the phone, period, the tablet. Whatever that you hold up as an idol, that is, that is placed higher than God, is against God. I'm telling you today, ladies and gentlemen. Repent. And turn to Jesus. We cannot live in sin. We cannot live in idolatry, adultery, fornication, homosexuality. These things, these ways, lead you right to the lake of fire. The truth be spoken today. The ways and desires of the flesh, the pride of life, lead straight to hell. Is this a place where you want to go? It's a question that you have to ask yourself. Shortly after creation, Satan introduced this evil into the world by convincing Adam and Eve to break the only rule that God had given them. Now, now, now we're making sense. This seemingly 
minor act of rebellion calls of all of mankind's potential for evil to be greatly magnified and made rebellion man's natural state. So let's answer the question, where did evil come from? Man's natural state. That's the reason why we must repent today and believe in Jesus Christ. You say, why do I need to repent? I tell you why you need to repent, because you were born in sin. I don't care how good you are, it's not going to get you to heaven. The truth is, we need Jesus. We need Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you, sir. We need Jesus. Jesus is the way. Repent and believe in the gospel of Christ. Hallelujah. Without God in your life, without Christ, you will perish. Take the fruits. Understand this today, ladies and gentlemen, that this could be your last day. Do you care? This could be the last day of your very existence on the face of this earth. You do not know. That's why you need Christ. Not just a, not, not just, God bless you, amen. Not just so that you can have eternal life. We're not going to come, we're not going to follow God just to have eternal life. God says, no, come to him diligently. Come to him in obedience. Come to him and receive the grace. Paul called it our sin nature. And the term creation upside down where Satan had been made as the model of purification with the potential of choosing evil. Mankind would hereafter be predisposed after towards evil with the potential for choosing to be made perfect. In other words, Satan had to choose evil. We have to choose good. And ladies and gentlemen, when people say, why am I going to hell? Why, why, why are you saying that I'm going to go to hell if I don't choose God? Well, I'll tell you today, it's a choice that you make. You see, it's the same thing today. It's the same thing that just goes around in circles. When people commit a crime, there's a punishment. There is a repercussion. And the same thing is with God. Sin is like a, a credit card. It's like a credit card, you just keep racking up the credit. Today, you can be forgiven. I want you to focus on that, ladies and gentlemen, the fact that you can be forgiven. Many people feel like they can't come to Christ because they had an abortion. Oh, I didn't, oh man, I didn't speak on that. I ain't even get to the abortion topic yet. I'm telling you, whatever you've done in your life, God will forgive you. Amen. God bless you, sir. You can be forgiven today. You can be made new today. In Christ, if you choose Jesus today. If you choose Him today. Choose Him today before your life is over. And that's more by orchestrating the one act of disobedience the devil had set mankind on a downward spiral that soon resulted in a state where every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil all the time. Genesis chapter 6 verse 5. I'm telling you the truth, ladies and gentlemen. If you reject Christ, you die. You're going to die two deaths. Spiritual, physical. Do you want that? That's the question you have to ask yourself. When you have a choice. You have a choice. You have a choice right now. To reject evil and accept Christ. To turn away from sin and accept Christ. 
accept the way, the truth, the life.